Okay, this is the third or uh, fourth presentation in a, in a series. The objective is a bit to um, you know present what I what I know uh, about a certain topic in uh, in IT. I talked about um, management models in in previous sector, um, and I talked about quantum computing. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about cybersecurity. Um, the session is born a bit out of a, a frustration. I actually applied for a, a cybersecurity job uh, with, with a large uh, Flemish company, and uh, I didn't get past uh, HR. Uh, they thought I was going too much in the weeds, um, which is probably right. Um, but so here I want to take my time to uh, yeah get a bit into the weeds, and at the same time, um, I don't want to get into the weeds. I really want to present uh, what I perceive to be like, you know, the big management challenges when, when you talk about cybersecurity. And, and you're an IT professional or a consultant who wants to, um, you know, become a member of a, of a team that works on that. Um, I'll start um, very pragmatically. Um, you know, if if you read the newspapers, um, you you can clearly see uh, cybersecurity uh, is on the rise, and um, sort of the level and the sophistication of uh, of, of of cybersecurity incidents um, has um, you know moved up, and it always moves up. Uh, it is really like a war. Um, coincidentally, uh, the fact that we do have a war with um, with Russia, that there are tensions with China, um, has led to a, you know an intensification, I would say, of the uh, yeah well, what's going on in that field. Um, but I will be pragmatic again and talk about uh, you know two or three incidents uh, that I found really uh, highly um, representative of of uh, what is going on now and what you as a you know, in a company or a public administration should be aware of. Um, you, you can't be complacent uh, because the two things, um, well, let, let's start. In, in 2022, we had um, Cisco. Uh, um, Cisco um, Cisco systems were, were compromised. Uh, it was a ransomware group that is uh, still active in you know, Luang. Um, the, the thing with the, uh, the attack... Um, was that you know a lot of data got stolen um, data that can be used in subsequent attacks uh, often um, non-disclosure agreements uh, were included engineering files um, the um, the thing that that struck me is that this attack uh, and the one I'm going to talk about later the uh, the breach with um, a security and access uh, management solution provider Okta um, started the same it started with the acquisition of credentials. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about you know the technical and the the, the social engineering side of um, of cybersecurity, but here clearly it starts um, you know these attacks combine both uh, uh, the technology and the social engineering side. But often we see do we we see these things start with um, uh, the acquisition of um, of credentials, uh, and so that's that's social engineering. That's um, you know, tokens or um, uh, user identification, a key uh, that normally you know should should not be um, should not be accessible. Uh, apparently, does uh, does get into the hands of uh, you know a bad actor. Um, I'm not going to go into weeds of that, um, but the issue there and uh, and the subsequent it is a very worrying one, and uh, I think. Uh, it gives rise to like a, a theme uh, that uh, you know uh, cybersecurity uh, companies clearly do see emerging. It is this blurring between um, you know the personal um, computing you do, uh, the personal accounts you use, and then uh, you know you getting access to your uh, organizational network or system or application through a, a service or work account. Um, even these companies, you know, Cisco, uh, Okta, um, they have very firm uh, policies in, in place, but we, we do so apparently, you know, that a cloud-based uh, password vault um, can get compromised. Um, and so, um, yeah, personal Google account is being used, um, give something away on, you know, a password or credentials you've used. Um, 
when accessing uh, uh, you know work related application um so um yeah from there it starts somehow a bad actor gets in with your credentials and um, I said this is very technical how, how it happens exactly and it shouldn't happen uh, I'll talk about that um, but it happens uh, the Okta uh, Okta you know is an OAuth um, um, provider uh, of uh, certificates uh, it started the same apparently with the uh, I mean I, I didn't go into the nitty-gritty of the uh, of the story um, but uh, Okta is a large uh, company, uh, they work with subcontractors, and so um, they have uh, yeah, a help desk, uh, client support, and apparently there it also started, it's, it's not quite clear where and how exactly, um, uh, you know, with a compromised uh, Google account on, on a device, huh? um, bring your own device or, or, or an Okta uh, provided computer. Um, and that, um, you know, the Okta breach is significant because it it uh, it showed um, one of its clients that that was uh, impacted was uh, beyond trust. Uh, so very, and they they played actually a major major role in containing that threat. Uh, they highlighted that Okta breach um, uh, was was not a, a, an insulated um, incident there had been a january 2022 uh, attack by by the hacker group uh, lapses um and that started the same you know people got in with uh, with some credentials and um the worrying thing about this is that um what i highlight here is um You know these uh, these companies provide security certificates, uh, and and these are supposed to prevent, you know, what they call uh, man in the middle attacks. Uh, indeed, you you have a session um, with an application uh, with, your, with, your, with, your, with your company, and you know currently uh, these things are encrypted, and these this encryption technology using one way hash functions and all that. Um, private and public key, double key um, uh, encryption. You know that there shouldn't be a man in the middle attack. Um, normally, you can't you can't get in. Um, I'll maybe um, show you something uh, to show. Uh, this is my uh, you know if you access Google Com, um, you know here I'm just as an individual browsing, but I do have a, like a Google account. And, um, you know, I can see everything that happens there and uh, it's scary and not in a way if I, um, you know, go underwater, um, you know, I can see everything. I can see, uh, you know, the, uh, the HTML page that is being served. I can see all the scripts that run on it. Um, of course, I can't see it directly. It gives a, a source. This gives where the source code is. But um, you know, I can go and go into the application. I can I can see my cookies uh, here. Um, there are three sets of cookies on it. General uh, cookies that come with uh, you know going to the Google.com site. Um, there's the cookies that come with um, you know being um, a Google user. Huh? So I have a, a, a Gmail and uh, there's a single sign-on to a lot of uh, you know applications. Um, and you know, all these applications I have huh? when 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 you're a Google user, um, well, it's not okay. Oh, yeah, okay, um, I'm actually pretty active, so I have Jamboard, but also you know I have an account with Google Ads, um, etc. So um, you know I can see that there's a lot of data, uh, credentials, tokens. Um, that that come with my account, and um, but you know these are all. Um, quite secure uh, you know you see these um, cookie values uh, the, these these keys that you get and um, you know once i close my my browser session i know these keys um, will be uh, will be deleted and the cookies will uh, will be deleted so you wonder how um, how these things are possible at all um, so but the worrying thing is indeed you know what what um, what happens really if you see these kind of incidents and it should make you very worried what happens if a, if a threat actor bad actors really get access to you know to something what it might uh, what, what amounted to you know a super admin role in um, you know in octa uh, octa's customers uh, you know the tenants um, you know the, the uh, beyond trust was was a large um, 
you know, I would say secondary provider using OCTAC technology and other technologies, of course, to, to help organizations with, um, you know, securing their systems. And they, um, they, they say the same thing. It's, um, you know, the technology is, um, is one thing, but the OCTA breach and other breaches are probably a symptom of, uh, you know, what in, in cybersecurity is, is now being referred to as a wider um, identity security uh, crisis. Um, I could um, talk about another one last year, which was even more high profile probably than the, the two uh, Cisco Okta I, I mentioned, the Mango Sandstorm crisis. There it was in a, apparently an Iranian um, hacker group uh, that got in also using, um, you know, um, personal credentials, uh, not bringing any payloads or malware, uh, but really using... Uh, and pivoting laterally uh, in in uh, an on-premise Active Directory server, uh, which synced with uh, Azure Active Directories, and they managed to, um, you know, um, yeah, get quite far into the system and uh, and do do bad stuff. I mean, Microsoft reacted um, very rapidly, and uh, but but it's interesting. These um, these things are, um, you know, real. They. Uh, they all sound like um, some kind of uh, science fiction movie, uh, but these scenarios are, um, you know, they're they're not scenarios. They they are real, and um, and so 2022, 2023, uh, with 31 December now, um, there's more of that to come, and um, you know, even these companies, they they say um, the um, you shouldn't uh, you should be worried about cybersecurity, but. Uh, you know, the scenario is now that you will likely um, face an incident um, in the coming year or years, and uh, you should be prepared for that and contain it and have a policy in place. Um, so you, um, yeah, you need to actively prepare. The, um, the thing um, that you classically have, uh, I should quote the source for that, but um, it, it's replicated on multiple sites, is that you have layers in, um, in security. And um, uh, I think all these, um, you know, classically we were focused on, yeah, data security, you know, your, your Oracle database, your application security. Uh, but classically, I would say the two things we always thought about was parameter security, a uh, web firewall, and endpoint security, a uh, next generation firewall that really uh, monitors all traffic uh, between the nodes in your network. And um, and we've moved to uh, identity security. Um, let me raise that. So uh, identity security, making sure that, uh, yeah, identity is the identity fabric uh, in your organization is, is being uh, monitored and, uh, and, and watched. Um, to go a bit technical uh, and maybe to illustrate that is... Um, Sort of when you talk about perimeter and, and, and network security, or let's say the second one, endpoint security, uh, technically you need to realize that um, we we um, we still think of uh, you know how this thing works and and what the vulnerabilities are in it. But um, you know technology has come a long way, especially you know encryption technology and uh, identification and authentication uh, protocols and, and standards. Um, but the key is still the same. You know, you will have uh, a user or two applications, I would say, you know, my web browser, uh, making a connection with, uh, you know, the service side. So we have a client uh, application A, think of your web browser, or think of an app on, um, on your phone. Uh, that's an application. Um, communicating with, uh, you know, the client side uh, through the internet. And uh, so a connection is established. Uh, you should remember a connection is always established between two um, sockets. So these combine um, an IP address and a port. And um, the standard ports, uh, AT is going to be used for non-secure protocols. Um, 
uh, UDP is a streaming protocol, so that, that might use that gate. And uh, secure protocols uh, often use the, the standard port 443. Um, one quick thing there, you might think an application is safer than accessing an application through a web browser. But you know, the, these ports um, often are the same. Uh, you can, of course, uh, uh, the IP addresses will often be dynamically uh, assigned. So these will change. Um, uh, but the ports, you know, but it, it's not there that the security risk uh, it really is. To illustrate further is um, I, I, I really show what, what you sort of can quickly do and, and see. Um, as a, as a you know a user access in something um, the the thing I showed you here you know going under the water uh, there there's a very easy uh, I would say open source um, uh, Unix tool that you know simplifies <laughs> you don't want to go into you know what are my cookies and and okay what protocol do they use uh, you really want to you know maybe quickly see uh, you know how you are connected. Um, with your device to you know the application that I'm using and then you can use something like nmap uh, I do that here against uh, uh, you know some target uh, website uh, it's not a target I'm not hacking but you can do quick uh, uh, scanning of ports and, and you can already uh, you know I just want to show you this um, this is really a random website I visited and I can immediately see like uh, you know a little bit of how this thing works they have two ports open which is normal uh, one state and standard HTTP uh, uh, protocol port which is not encrypted uh, I could use that to sort of explore um, um, sorry it's the 80 port that is a and then the 80 port the HTTPS um, uh, encrypted port Mm, so the 4431 is the HTTPS one. I made a mistake here. Um, this tool will, you know, run and quickly give you. And I want to show you this. It will, will already quickly give you um, a, a lot of information. What I see here is yes, it's a, a secure socket. Uh, um, you know, um, so um, um, they 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 use encryption. Uh, it's a transport layer security protocol. Uh, 1.1 or 1.2, I don't know, but I can already see that they're using most likely, you know, Apache web service as opposed to, for instance, um, you know, Nginx or Oracle WebLogic or, you know, uh, Microsoft um, Internet Information Services. And uh, I can see the, 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 the methods, uh, the common uh, standard methods, get, head, post, um, options that they use. Uh, so you see, I can... Um, I can already quite see um, uh, uh, a lot. Um, funny thing is here, uh, you know, just uh, Nmap does that kind of standard. They also guess like, um, you know, apart from the web servers, what would be the underlying operating system. So they come back actually with uh, Citrix, which is a load balancer. Um, but, um, you know, I can see, I can also see they, they support uh, Older uh, protocols, MD5, SH01 uh, standard. Um, so, um, but this is classically what you see. And the the thing is, because I'm not an expert, um, I can do nothing at all with this. Uh, you know, I can also see sort of, uh, you know, their ISP provider, which is Telenet, and uh, you know how it hops and um, um, what IP addresses they're using, uh, what they they're getting from Telenet, etc., uh, etc. Et but um, again, this is um, this is all um, you know not very relevant in the sense that uh, um, you know for me, uh, if I would be a hacker, uh, you know, it's very difficult to get in and uh, and abuse that really. Um, the thing that is really worrying about this is that uh, you know companies like Cisco, Okta, they have really that encrypted communication in place the endpoint network security and um you know is the social engineering that uh, that is that is more important in these hacks uh, it's really credentials of um of users uh, or or tokens um but mostly uh, user credentials that um, a hacker gets access to and he works his way through the system without all of your automatic and technical controls your web firewall and, and your uh, next generation firewall noticing anything um you know that is suspicious um because this appears to be alleged user uh, coming in 
So um, these these hacks are very bad uh, and should uh, really act as a, as a wake up call. Um, Beyond Trust has has a really nice video uh, and blog and um, and and webinars uh, which which I recommend download. They uh, they say well your identity you know uh, apart from you know the the thing you, you do of course your your application endpoint network security. Um, it's really monitoring what they call your your identity uh, space or or your identity fabric, and that's that's a whole different um, um, attack surface, as they call it, than um, you know your perimeter or or your network. So um, that involves very active management of um, you know your accounts. Um, and and the use how how you use Active Directories or or free IPA on on a Unix um, on Unix, look for dormant accounts and uh, see if they suddenly get activated. I said a lot of uh, cybersecurity incidents in the past probably uh, lead to um, you know user account uh, data uh, being out there and possibly uh, you know it might get exploited by by bad actors so look at the dormant accounts and uh, yeah if they suddenly get active again uh, wake up um, you may want to delete them to prevent an attack uh, but, but probably better strategy would be to uh, you know see what happens um, because you do want to do uh, you know threat analysis and identification sometimes it's better um, to to see what happens and monitor that to to see what sort of the second line of attack would be um yeah of course monitor uh, new accounts or um i'll talk about that the, the fifth recommendation review your configurations if accounts you know combine it um if accounts open a session to what's called the uh, asn fetchers autonomous system numbers which um i will translate to um you know for instance where uh, is the uh, the ip address located um that that logs on and uh, in the okta uh, breach case uh, a proxy server was used, um, uh, which was based in Malaysia. You could see that, and so uh, Beyond Trust had seen that actually earlier than Okta and had alerted Okta to uh, to that. So um, yeah, these configurations, um, and that ties in with sort of the fourth thing. It's sort of a multi-factor authentication. Um, fetcher, I would say, at the system level, uh, where you combine various. Um, um, tokens or things that happen when when a session get activated to see if there's a you know a, a legitimate or or suspicious signature on it um but going back to that um, identity fabric and monitoring it um you know look at password resets huh? someone steals a password and then is going to reset it um you know and and constantly watch your privileges and that's the um thing the the third one um you know in enforce least uh, uh privilege uh, uh be very active in your management of admin and surely a super admin um, uh, account um don't don't let it um don't let it get beyond control uh, or, or too numerous enforce least privilege and um yeah this this blurring uh, that we have de facto between you know personal and work accounts uh, with working at home um from devices that are not necessarily uh you know devices that have been given to you um by the organization um especially for sort of uh, you know power users they might get you know a, a laptop from the company but yeah they will need to if they're developers they will need to uh, have some freedom to install um you know these will probably be unix workstations and they need to you know could get on github and install some tool and or download some framework um so um it, it gets dangerous when these uh, devices uh, are also used for personal um uh, purposes and uh, and 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 personal and work accounts uh, get mixed up um so that's where uh, you know, a hacker can get in uh, and temporarily and uh, and quickly work his way uh, through the system. So um, I'll keep it at that. Um, maybe I'll um, I'll see if there's something else. No, I'm not really. I'm really getting too much into weeds, network segregation, and, and stuff. Um, let me close this one. Maybe what I do want to um, look at is um is a few other things um yeah maybe maybe this one um tooling 
or applications. Uh, maybe let me first go to this one. Mm, takes a while. Uh, yeah, part of uh, this presentation is me learning how to use a Microsoft whiteboard. I'm I'm not super creative with it, but I uh, I like the tool, and um, yeah, I want to make it a bit more dynamic than just uh, you know uh, a PowerPoint presentation. No, that takes a lot of time. Have it in PDF format, but in the meanwhile, it did load. So let me make it larger. Yeah, I just want to um, uh, go back a little bit. I really, I said this city for Beyond Trust, um, but I think they've been very mature in analyzing the breach because you know Okta, uh, uh, the Okta breach affected uh, Beyond Trust. As a, as a cybersecurity company, and so customers of um, of Beyond Trust were um, were affected by it. This is why they they made such an interesting, um, you know, analysis uh, post breach. Uh, this is sort of where um, um, they they look at things now. Indeed, in the middle, uh, you'll have. Um, your ID security um, fabric uh, and your ID security um, uh, infrastructure. Around it, uh, you will still have what what used to be classical things, and that's indeed, you know, for your Windows and, and Mac devices, uh, the management of privileges uh, through um, Active Directories. Um, for, for Linux and, and Unix, um, systems devices that are on your network yeah the management of privilege privileges and 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 users through the equivalent of uh, active directories which is free um, ipa identification protection and audit uh, and ipa is also beer uh, connected by uh, a tool that bridges both uh, ad bridge um with new tools that are available for sort of doing you know um unified uh, uh, secrets management uh, uh, in your organization and uh, yeah if you go for um, and I would we would recommend that I said the scenario is, is likely that you will be hacked and that you will need to contain an attack and that you will need a very decent advice to uh, you know limit the damage and uh, to damage control so um, yeah you will have uh, you know, remote support um, for your uh, security architecture um so the the four areas then where um it's really sort of secure uh, uh your your privileges and uh, and secrets uh, control access and uh, entitlements that's sort of the classical thing uh, protect your endpoints is even more classical and discover uh, identities and and threats uh, and this one is a very important i think um discover identities and threats do uh, have a have an active active rather than a passive um uh security posture um uh, in these days you need to have that so um that's what i'm gonna say about it um i'm gonna keep my uh, whiteboard clean so i can use it next time um maybe i'll go to you know in terms of tooling um, and that's something else uh, I'm often asked, uh, you know, in interviews to talk about, you know, tooling and ITIL, um, you know, the information technology information library, uh, ITIL 3 with, uh, you know, processes, um, IT processes as opposed to, you know, IT projects. Um, use tools. Uh, tools um, incorporate two things, I think. Uh, standards uh, they incorporate standards 
um, which is important. You know, you, you want to make sure that uh, your organization is kind of, you know, compliant with standards. Uh, maybe you don't want to get a ISO certified or, or I'm not thinking of these kind of standards, but ISO standards do come with, um, with you know, a framework uh, and benchmarks to which you can, uh, you know, uh, with which we can compare yourself. And using a tool is going to help you to standardize indeed and, uh, you know, make sure that you have that psychological comfort also um, of, uh, you know, using a, a management framework, which, um, you know, is offered by the tool. And uh, I've seen a lot of tools being, you know, used only a partially or... Mm -hmm. Or, or even, you know, um, I'm thinking like Jira and Confluence from Atlassian. I saw it used in one organization, uh, you know, as an issue management tool. But it, it's so much more than that. It's a, it's a portfolio management tool. And when you do your issue management, um, you know, make sure um, what, what issues you want to do and handle with that tool. Issues, you know, in a team that has to develop some kind of new uh, software product. Or, or get something done are very different uh, issues than um, uh, issues as they are managed in, I would say, for me, um, for me as a tool for um, incident and problem management. So the issues there are, you know, incidents or, or problems, uh, also requests of users. And so distinguish these two and... Um, and don't, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, for instance, Jira Confluence, you'll use it indeed for IT project management, while for me, you will use it for, uh, you know, a very different type of uh, issues and, and processes, uh, indeed, at incident problem management and your help desk that has to fulfill, um, you know, uh, and answer a number of requests in your organization. Um, I looked at ServiceNow um, briefly. It was used by a contractor and a in, a, in an organization I worked for. Uh, it's a beautiful tool, um, and there's a few things I want to highlight uh, in it. Um, the, uh, the the features of this tool is, um, first, you know, they, they allow you to automate workflows. They offer a, a, a lot of templates for, for, for workflows. And um, and ServiceNow actually has, has a lot of built-in workflows that you can just, you know, deploy out of the box. Um, I'm... I'm Giving a few examples here, you know, employee workflows, you know, HR processes, uh, field service management, you know, your staff that is in the field and, you know, tr doing stuff, uh, tracking them uh, and seeing that they get the job done and measuring their productivity. Um, I know the, a few other things of, of service now. Um, it has a lot more uh, intelligence, I would say, document intelligence. And like it can pull data from, uh, you know, can be integrated with your um, uh, I would say your ERP, you know, purchase orders, invoices with your financial system. It can pull data from that and feed it, for instance, into your uh, in the asset management module of it. So um, the way they they manage their users um, is is very interesting. You know the categories, and and this is the thing then that is related to um, to cybersecurity. Uh, they've got a very sophisticated uh, identification and authentication solution. I would say solutions. Um, it can be combined with, you know, various solutions indeed, and you can sort of um, use the way uh, uh, you you organize service now with the people in your organization accessing it to, um, you know, develop also some kind of model for how other uh, applications in your organization uh, should be managed. So um, the way they structure actually yeah, user accounts, how they uh, uh uh, you know, assign groups to them. How they um, how they manage roles and the permissions around it. It's uh, it's quite um, it's quite impressive. But I'm not gonna make more publicity for this. Um, and uh, you know, uh, stop this presentation. I've been uh, talking long enough. Uh, I said it's sort of a bit of a, a freewheeling presentation around a, a few themes um, that um, you know um, I wanted to. Um, to highlight things, uh, if only, you know, to be better prepared when I get a question on that from an HR person or, um, you know, an organization who wants to hire me as a consultant to say like, well, what do you think about uh, cybersecurity or what do you think about service now? Then next time I can say, well, look at my presentation and, uh, and see what you find interesting about it or not. And then I can uh, dig into these uh, very specific topics. Um, 
um, as you please. One one thing, uh, yeah, I see here now with service now, you know, the Internet of Things, uh, and we're also talking there. Um, you know, it's related to cybersecurity. Since uh, Stuxnet, I think, was in 2010. Uh, you know, malware often doesn't get uh, loaded onto uh, vectors that you would associate with, uh, you know, your web browser or, you know, a file uh, that is attached to an email. Um, Stuxnet was basically uh, a worm and malware that was loaded onto uh, a device driver, you know, basically uh, infected uh, programmable uh, logic controllers uh, from Siemens. And um, it, it wasn't spread through the internet, it, it, uh, it traveled through uh, USB sticks. And that's getting more and more uh, sophisticated. I'm saying this because, you know, our networks will now, you know, connect uh, a lot of, um, you know, stuff uh, that is not your classical device, not your classical uh, laptop or um, smartphone um, or uh, you know a, a, a lightweight uh, Microsoft Surface or, or Google operating system um, no it will connect a lot of stuff and uh, and that's where some um, um, service now when they think about asset management um, that will uh, do discovery of that too and help you uh, program it uh, so the workflows you have in there um, have been expanded hugely over the last five years. I think uh, the new CEO of ServiceNow comes from SAP. So uh, robotic um, um, process automation, is, is it's very interesting to see how it works with ServiceNow. And one thing, um, yeah, that's, that's actually why I opened the ServiceNow, is uh, ServiceNow is uh, quite powerful. Um, so it's an IT service management tool, but it's also an IT asset management tool. The nice thing about ServiceNow is that it has very advanced fetchers um, that use uh, what I showed you a bit now, like port scanning uh, uh, within your network to discover assets so it's not like this passive tool where you have to enter you know i've got so many servers i got this i got that um no it will um it will discover assets it will discover nodes in your network and uh, it will discover what runs on them uh, what instances uh, you, uh run on on, on a certain uh, um server and it will start mapping these and uh, and that's something very interesting from where um, you can um, uh, build onto that. You can really build onto that to uh, make sure that your uh, your network, your 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 systems, your applications are much safer by doing really a, you know a complete scan of the the hardware and the software assets that you have in an organization. So I would say uh, look look at those uh, facilities. And um, I said these um, these talks are not meant for ICT professionals. Uh, they're meant for managers. I think every manager has to be an ICT manager now, just like every organization has to become, you know, sort of a technology organization. You um, you know, there, there's no project that uh, uh, has no technology component. There's no organization or, or business process anymore that um, that doesn't have a technology component. So the things I'm explaining here, um, uh, I hope, will increase uh, that awareness and um, and make you manage better. And with that, I will uh, I will end the presentation.